Good evening. It's time to begin our afternoon worship service here at Commissary Church of Christ. I'd like to take a moment to welcome each and every one of you who've made the choice to be with us tonight. And if there's any visitors amongst us, you are our honored guest. If you would, spend just a few minutes after services so we get to know you a little bit better, more personal. There's a nursery provided for those who may be in need of one. It's through the double doors in the back of the auditorium and to the left. There is also a speaker in there so you can stay updated on our services as well. If you haven't done so, this would be a good time for you to silence your cell phones or any electronic media devices you may have so they won't disturb us during our worship service. I'd also like to remind you of our schedule of services here at Commissary. We meet for classes Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. Worship service begins at 10.05 a.m. Sunday nights we meet at 5.30 p.m. And we also have a midweek service on Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. Just a few announcements to be made. Um, again, our sympathy goes out to the family of Randy Brinkley from the Union Central Congregation. He passed away last Friday. Julie Lloyd is scheduled for a CT scan of her heart on Monday, April the 1st. Daniel Wilkerson is back home and doing well after his hernia surgery last Monday. And remember, we'll be honoring our high school seniors on Sunday, April 7th. Just an update on Don Ork. He is feeling better this afternoon and he has plans on going to the doctor tomorrow. Also, there is a sign-up sheet out in the foyer for a meal train for Ken and Naomi. Uh, if you want to look at that and put your name down for an appropriate time, I'm sure they would appreciate it. Is there any other announcements that needs to be made or something I might have overlooked? If not, leading our services tonight, Wes Wilkerson will be leading us in singing. Our speaker will be Brother Art Smith. Thomas Lindsay will have our closing prayer. And now Charlie's going to lead our minds in an opening prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, you are awesome and beautiful and holy. And to be able to come into your presence is an honor and a blessing. I'm asking, please, while we do so, that you accept the worship that we offer. I know sometimes we do things that separate us from you. We sin. Please forgive us, and please help us to learn from our mistakes. We don't want to do anything that would take us out of your presence. Father, there are some folks that are hurting today for lots of reasons. Some are sick. Some aren't doing well. Some are emotionally hurting and some have lost those that we love. I'm asking please that you be with those folks, touch their hearts and give them a peace that only you can offer. This world is transient, it's passing, it's going away, but you are eternal and what you offer is eternal and that's what we need, it's what this world needs. Please help us when we leave here later to show the world that we do have that blessing, the peace that only you offer. I thank you Father for Jesus Christ our sacrifice, our brother, our redeemer, our savior. And I thank you, I don't understand how God became man, but he did, and I'm grateful. He was one of us and he understands us. I'm grateful. It's in his name that we pray, amen. It's always 
shall be. Praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, what a singing, oh, what a shouting, on the happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what a glory, hallelujah, when we meet our blessed Savior in the sky. Thank Here all who suffered so 
421. Four hundred twenty one. <clears throat> I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deep, they stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard a despairing cry from the
that uh, things do not always turn out the way you want them to be. When I was in Costa Rica this uh, last week, we take a, a day off uh, during the week and uh, we went to a volcano and the local preacher down there, one of the local preachers uh, went with us and uh, we were walking in, down this trail, and suddenly he said, I don't know where the keys to the van are. And 
he had driven a van out there. We were miles and miles away from where we were staying. And uh, he said, well, maybe, maybe they're in the van. And so um, we continued walking an hour or so later, got back to the van, and he looked in the window, and sure enough, they were in the switch. But the van was locked, and uh, we asked some of the men that were working if they could maybe get into the van, and they tried, and they tried. And uh, we asked uh, the preacher if he had another set of keys. He said, yes, at home, but there's no one that can... Uh, go get them right now. And so finally, uh, one of the ladies that was uh, on the uh, trip with us uh, called someone who said that uh, he could be there in about 30 minutes. It was closer to an hour when he got there. But uh, I was anxious for us to get back to camp because uh, hoping to get there before dark because we were leaving at 2 o'clock in the morning to go to the airport to come back home. Uh, but finally that man got there and... Uh, in just a matter of a few minutes, he uh, got uh, the door open and we were able to uh, go back uh, to, to camp. And uh, we didn't get back to camp before dark and uh, didn't get a whole lot of sleep. When you have a bunch of young people along, they're not gonna sleep very much anyway, but uh, I wanted to sleep. Uh, but we uh, were able to, to get on the, the plane and, and head back to the States. Um, and those of you that have flown very much, you can't always get to, you know, you can't always get the schedule that you want. Uh, I think I've made about 40 trips to Alaska, and uh, I've gone through uh, Atlanta, I've gone through Detroit, I've gone through uh, Los Angeles, through Salt Lake City, you name it, and I've gone through there on the way to Alaska, and uh, you sometimes uh, have a long layover. Uh, I remember coming back from Alaska uh, a few years ago, we had to stop at Portland, and I uh, had about an hour layover there. At least that's what I thought, and found out I had a nine-hour layover. But those things happen. And uh, when we were trying to schedule uh, our flight back to the States, uh, uh, we could only go through Miami, and we had a 12-hour 12 12 layover there. And uh, I told the young people, I said, well, we have a 12-hour layover. I suppose if you wanted to go to the beach, we probably could do that during the 12-hour during the layover. I didn't want to go, but we've done that before on some trips with the young people. And they were so tired, uh, they, that's the last thing in the world they wanted to do, and I you know, thank the Lord for that. Uh, but uh, staying in, a, in an airport for 12 hours is, is not easy. Uh, when we were coming back from um, uh, Panama uh, last year, and we landed at Atlanta, got on the airplane, and uh, we stayed on tarmac for about two hours and they said, well, uh, we need to go back uh, to, to the airport, uh, need to go back to the gate. And uh, it was already raining and so we went back to the gate. We sat there for about an hour. Finally, they said, uh, we're not going to Memphis. Said the weather's too bad, uh, everybody will have to get off the plane. So we got off the plane and uh, spent the night there in Atlanta before coming back. Uh, Things do not always turn out like you, you want them to. Um, and I think a little bit about eternity. And uh, I hope it turns out the way you want it to. Uh, God wants it to turn out uh, for you. Yeah, he wants everyone to be saved. We know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He loved the whole world, loved every one of us. And uh, he loved us, you know, when we were not lovable. Uh, God commanded his love to us and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, Romans 5, verse 8. And, uh, but God wants all of us to be saved, wants everything to turn out for us in eternity. Uh, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, Second Peter 3, verse 9. He wants everyone to repent, wants everyone to be obedient, wants everyone to go to heaven, and he's provided a way. Christ died for all. And it's the will of the Lord that all uh, 
come to a knowledge of truth and be saved, 1 Timothy 2 in verse 4. This morning we talked about uh, the rich farmer and uh, he had plans. He said, I'm going to tear down my barns, I'm going to build bigger barns, I'm going to sit back, eat, drink, and be merry. And God said, you're a fool because tonight your soul is going to be required of you. And things that belong to you are then going to belong to someone else. That was just a story, but it's a story of a man uh, who planned, and his plans didn't work out like he thought they would. Relying on the future can be a very dangerous uh, thing. Uh, if you're not a child of God, or if you're not in the right relationship with God, hopefully you'll have opportunities to make things right uh, uh, at some time in the future. Uh, but you you may not. Uh, and and we, we know that, you know, in our, in our mind, but I think sometimes we have difficulty accepting that in, in our heart. Um, living a Christian life, uh, I don't know about you, Brenda would tell you I'm a pretty good procrastinator. That's a big word for putting things off. And, uh, you know, if you came to our house uh, and uh, you got into my shed, you would know, yeah, he's procrastinated. He hadn't cleaned that shed up, you know. If you went into my little office, uh, you'd think the same thing. You'd say, what in the world happened in here? Well, uh, you know, I, I keep putting off uh, straightening things up, uh, and I'm married to someone that never procrastinates, uh, but uh, I guess uh, opposites attract. But, you know, in living a Christian life, one of the things that uh, is required of you and me is to share the faith. You know, the, the commandment, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, is not given to just a few. Uh, you know, we might say, well, Jesus was just speaking to his apostles, but in Matthew's account, he said, go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things Whatever I, I have commanded you, Matthew 28, 19, and 20. And what had he just commanded them? He said, you teach them what I've commanded you, and he had just commanded them uh, to go preach the gospel. And so we have a, a responsibility to share our faith. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to go on a mission trip, and if you can, that's wonderful. And uh, I hope that uh, sometime in the, in the not-too-distant future that uh, we can have a mission trip uh, comprised of members here at Commissary. We took one in, in 2019, and some of you got to go on that trip. We went to Haiti. Uh, I was, that was in, uh, in January, and I was planning to take a group of uh, young people in March back to Haiti, and I remember saying to those little children there and, and, the, and the church members, we'll see you again in March, and we haven't been back because of uh, circumstances. Civil unrest, uh, pandemic came, and we've not been able to go back. But uh, you may never uh, go on a mission trip, and that doesn't excuse you from sharing the faith with, with uh, people that, with whom you have contact, people with whom you work, uh, people with whom you attend school, neighbors, friends, loved ones. And, and maybe in the back of our mind say, I'm going to be a better personal evangelist. I'm going to get involved in this, in telling others about, about the Lord. I'm going to convert somebody someday. Gonna is not in dictionary. Uh, and uh, uh, somebody is not in the telephone book. Someday is not on the calendar. We procrastinate. Now, I want to suggest to you that there are four things that can prevent us from uh, doing the Lord's will in the future. Four things that could keep you from obeying the gospel if you're not a Christian. Four things, one of four things that, that could keep you from uh, uh, rededicating your life to the Lord. And you know what these are. One is you could die. We talked a little bit about that this morning and uh, quoted uh, Isaac who said, I do not know the day of my death, Genesis 27 and verse 2. Uh, and uh, if you were planning on 
becoming a Christian in the future or planning on rededicating, rededicating your life in the future, death could keep that from happening. If you're planning to, to be uh, more involved in, in the work of the church, ministry of the church, uh, planning to talk to more people about their souls, and but you're going to do that in the future, well, it won't happen if you die, and you will die. So that's one thing to prevent uh, uh, doing something in the future. Lord could come back. Now, we don't know when he's coming back. A lot of people have guessed. A lot of people think they know when he's going to come back. And Jesus said, Of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels in heaven, neither the Son, but only the Father. Mark 13, verse 32. Uh, and at that time, Jesus was here on the earth. He said, I don't even know when I'm coming back. I have an idea he may know now, but he didn't know right then exactly when he was going to come. And uh, through the years, people have made uh, uh, guesses. They've... they've um, misinterpreted certain verses that they see in the Bible and they think, well, yeah, I know exactly when he's going to come back, but we don't know. If he should return before you give your life to the Lord, before you decide to be baptized into Christ, or if he should return before you have the opportunity, and I put it, shouldn't put, that, put it that way, uh, if he should return before you make the decision to rededicate your life, it'll be too late, won't it won't. Uh, if he should return before you get involved in, in sharing your faith with others, then be too late. A third thing, uh, could get too sick. Uh, and uh, we should do all we can while we have good health because, uh, uh, and, and a number of you have experienced bad health, you know you're just not going to be able to do as much when you, when you don't have your health. Uh, and I believe I've told you before about a cousin of mine who uh, actually overdosed. Uh, and uh, they thought she was going to die. Uh, and uh, they finally uh, unhooked all the life uh, support uh, stuff that they put on a, a patient to keep uh, him or her breathing, but she kept living. And uh, she lived for about eight or nine years. And whenever I'd go to Alaska, I'd, I'd go by the, the nursing home where she was a patient. And, and just she'd just lie in there, no, you know, Breathing, but that's all. And uh, if that happened to you, uh, and you didn't have the ability, then, well, it'd be too late, wouldn't it? But I want to suggest another one, another thing that could, could keep uh, us from uh, obeying God or, or becoming more evangelistic, uh, more involved in Lord's work. Uh, this is a Sunday night audience, uh, and and I know that I'm speaking uh, I'm speaking to the choir. We don't even have a choir in the churches of Christ, <laughs> but I'm speaking I'm speaking to people for the most part that are really, you're faithful, uh, and and uh, it's been my experience through the years that most of the work that that gets done by the church will be by those that are there on Sunday night and Wednesday night. And we have people that come on Sunday morning can't be here on Sunday night, Wednesday night, and the Lord knows that. Uh, but you have a heart for the Lord. Uh, and it's encouraging to me to see that. But when we keep putting off doing what, what we know we should do, whether it's becoming a Christian, re rededicating ourselves, becoming more involved in the work of the Lord, our heart might become hardened. It, it may, may come uh, to the point where we, we don't care and we become very indifferent. And regardless of what the preacher might say, regardless of the encouragement from the elders, regardless of uh, the uh, concern that other members of the church have, the heart becomes so hard that it just reaches a point where they're not going to not going to uh, do what's right. 
I think uh, if one of those four things happened, it would keep us from uh, becoming uh, a better person in the future. Death, the Lord's return, uh, we become too sick, or the heart becomes too hardened. And so tonight, if you have uh, a relationship that, uh, with the Lord, that's wonderful. If you don't, what we urge you to do is to make things right now because there's no guarantee about tomorrow. Now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 2. If you need to respond to the Lord's invitation, we bid you come as we stand and sing. Have you a heart that's weary, tending a load of care? Are you a soul that's seeking rest from the burden you bear? Do you know? Art's voice is about gone, so he asked me to take care of this. Glenda Clements comes forward tonight, and she says she wants to get her life right with the Lord. And she's made that decision tonight, and she wants to be a member with us here at Commissary. And uh, very thankful for Glenda and the decision that she's made tonight. And the angels are rejoicing in heaven, and we're rejoicing too. So we're very thankful, and let's let everybody get to know her uh, as soon as we can. So let's uh, rally around her. Let's go ahead and go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we humbly pray before you. We give you praise and glory for everything you blessed us with. We're so thankful for Jesus and him coming to this earth and and building that bridge of reconciliation between you and us. and We're so thankful for this avenue that we have to you through, through him in prayer. We're so thankful for the, the life that he lived and the sacrifice that he made and the church that he established. We're so thankful that we get to be members of it. And we're especially thankful right now for Glenda Clements and her decision to to come back to you 
and uh, get her life right with you. We're so thankful for her making that decision. We pray, Father, that you'll be with Glenda and her Christian walk. Pray that you'll be with each one of us, that we can encourage her. And she's already encouraged us tonight. We're, we're very thankful for her. Pray, Father, that you'll be with us all. Pray that we all strive to glorify you in all things. Pray that you'll forgive us when we fail you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. If you did not have the opportunity to take the Lord's Supper this morning, it's been left repaired to the door to my left. You can go there as you're singing the closing song, number 595. Let's all stand, please, and after this song, we'll let our closing prayer. <clears throat> Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. This high is royal banner, give us our suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall be thee. Let us pray together. Again, our Holy Father, we're so thankful to you that we can be here tonight. Father, be uplifted in the fellowship that we can have to, with one another and be encouraged as we sing together in praises to your holy name. And thankful for your love. Thankful for the message that we received today and help each of us to determine in our life. We know you have done what you can do and what you want us to do is to be willing to accept what you have done for us. Father, and to bring our life into subjection to your will and your love, knowing that only what you want for us is the best things for us. Be with us now, Father, we thank to you for the sister that has come. Father, may her life be encouraged and strengthened to each and every one of us. Always be merciful to us again, Father, when we come acknowledging the things that are amiss in our life and trying to change them that you will forgive us and make us in good standing in your sight. Thank you for Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. <clears throat>